So first of all, what was the mindset of the developer that yep. wrote this? Yep. Um, how did they try to protect it? And uh, what did people attempt to do in order to uh, break in? Right. So that's a very simple code. Uh, you can find this code in many, many types of apps where you're sending an argument. An argument is a URL or, or um, the source for the image. Pretty plain, doesn't sound harmful. But the, the issue is, you know, the developer already knew that there is a risk here, right? The URL can be manipulated by a user. So what they've done is they actually use the DOM Purify to try to sanitize the image parameter that arrived uh, on the URL. But um, in this case, it wasn't enough. And we'll explain exactly where, why. But the, the mindset of the developer is I'm protecting my uh, user input by sanitizing, the, by using DOM Purify to sanitize the, the parameter. And then I'm planting it under the source. You know, if I run a few tests, if I try to close tags or do things that are obvious on XSS, it will block me. Okay, so that's the mindset. People try to say, okay, let's try to just close the image tag and inject a script. That would be the standard way to do XSS is like, you know, try to eliminate the tag that we're working on right now, which is the image, and then open another script tag and actually inject that here. That won't work, and I can use that. Why, why wouldn't it work? Because the DOM Purify catches it. The DOM Purify won't let you uh, open and close tags. So a typical solution would look like this, is within the image URL, what I'm doing is I'm giving it a wrong URL that will throw an error and then open the attribute within the same tag. So I'm not opening and closing tags. Within the same attribute, use the on error, very valid um, uh, attribute to insert an alert. That's exactly what- um, We didn't see the alert, I guess, because of the way the screen is shared. Yeah. But yeah, basically, um, alert an alert popped up, and mm -hmm. so so this is smart. This is basically the on error is what allowed you to run an XSS. Yes. So basically, exactly. we're using the we're we're triggering an error in order to um, create an XSS, which is smart. So so the idea here is what the developer missed when they wrote this. Okay is that it's not enough to sanitize the input. So DOM Purify is a great, great library, and I do highly recommend using it. However, the problem is with using only it or using it incorrectly is that you might not capture enough. Here's an example of how it should actually work. So from a developer perspective, if you are um, you, you know, doing something like that, instead of just sanitizing the user input, sanitize the entire tag or set of tags. Once you sanitize the entire tag, DOM Purify has the context of the tag. You won't be able to close and open tags, but that you couldn't do even before. But even something like that, using the on error approach, would be sanitized properly because the DOM Purify actually sees the tag and remove that malicious, potentially malicious code that you're trying to inject. So basically, we need to sanitize not only the user input, but the entire HTML element that exactly. um, that we want to basically display. Exactly, exactly. I think, however, developers should always be, and that's where I think this, this is important. We're publishing this. This is going to be available on the challenge itself. There's going to be a link to this. So here you'll see the goal, the description of the code, what we just talked about, uh, what's wrong with that approach, uh, what would a successful attack look like, what we talked about. And then the so what is important. We'll talk about it in a second. But the main takeaways, one of the things that I wanted to emphasize is it's not enough to use a library, okay, this second one. It's great to use third-party libraries. It's highly recommended as long as you do it responsibly. responsibly. But what is doing it responsibly means, actually means. It means that you understand the scope of the library. What does it do? What are the best practices? You read a little bit about it. You don't need to understand the code. You don't need to analyze the code and be able to write the library on your own because it's well tested and already working. But you need to understand what the library does and how it does it so that when you use it, you use it properly and correctly. The XSS itself only injects a JavaScript code. How harmful that could, could, could that be? And we're thinking about, okay, so you launched an alert. So what? Okay, not a big deal. However, XSS, as also many other vulnerabilities, are not standalone, okay? 
sometimes in and of itself it's not that harmful but the you know being able to get into the context of the app if it's a logged in user it has cookies if it's a logged in user it's available it's some apis are available to it you can perform actions on behalf of the user okay which can be very harmful but that's not enough like if someone wants to actually take over a system what they would do is they use xss now they're in the context of some user but then they will try to find i doors like x broken access controls weak ciphers and etc to get in even deeper and maybe take over an admin account which is way more effective if they want to take over and so forth so we have to remember that those simple things that give us an entry point are not necessarily the end of it right as you can say okay it's not the impact is not big but it can be super harmful because once you're in a new a whole host of new opportunities open up for you